here joining. What's going on, Adi? I'm going to just turn my lights on a little bit more. Okay. Somebody is coming on board, and I might have to just go there and, hey, Adia. Hey. I love your new hair. Thank you. So cute. Let's see if I turn this light off. That's not going to give me the, okay. It's kind of a grainy picture, but you know. It's <laughs> yesterday. It looks great. Thank you. Oh, you missed yesterday. Well, I did put the video up there. Okay. You go watch it. Um, the hardest thing is trying to answer people's text messages and emails while I'm on here. I go like, I cannot answer you right now. <laughs> so uh, it, it gets kind of funny like that. Um, so. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, sh on the Facebook, I'm going to share my screen in a minute. So you won't see my face, but you'll hear me talking. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to wait for a couple more people to come in. A couple more people are joining on the Facebook page. There's Debbie, all the way from South Africa. Wow. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How about yourself? I'm good, thank you. Lovely to see you again. You too. It's so nice to see you on um, here. What are, what are you up to? Like, what time is it there? Seven, six o'clock? It's, it's six o'clock in the evening. Ah, okay. Yeah. How's everyone? How's your daughter? It's uh, actually, sorry, it's five. It's five. Okay. It's five. Five o'clock in the evening. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Just great seeing you here. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been like a, a lot of fun and it's been very interesting to kind of get um, all the technology to do what I wanted to do. Like I've had this great idea. Like I want to be on a line with my creatives and my friends. Uh, and I want, I want to do it this way. And uh, yeah, I have to catch up with you. Claire! Hey there, Hi. from Denmark. <laughs> Hi. How are you, darling? I'm fine, I'm fine. Finally got in. Yay, so happy. Yeah. Well, I'm, on, I'm in two places. I'm on Zoom and I'm on Facebook Live on our group page. Um, I couldn't find that directly. I went to your, I went to your page and then uh -huh. I couldn't, the link didn't, wasn't live. Okay. Um, okay, well, here we are. I hope that uh, people can find me some kind of way because I think and I hope I put the link on um, our group page. And the group pages? Yeah, on, on um, Teach with Ease Online. Ah, yeah. Not on my profile page, Lenora Helm Hammonds, but on my group page. Okay, that's yeah, all right. That's the tr tricky thing with these with these uh, presentations is that um, yeah. people like look to try to find you and you try to like um, get the clarity about you know where people yeah. should go. Yeah, so. yeah. But okay, well I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna put this. Uh, I'm gonna put the slides on on the Zoom page, and you'll see me. Uh, talking about what you see on the slides as we go by and then um, if you're just watching on the Facebook live you'll just kind of see me talking to the screen um, and I will um, just make sure and put those two videos together um, so that they make sense to people like the slides will be there oh I have that like glare in my face here Let's see. How about clear too? I can see. Okay, I think that's a little better. Okay. 
So let me share my screen and get started and we can have some fun. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Okay, so Adia, while, while we're here before other people are joining us, Adia, me, Debbie, Debbie, me, Claire. Um, and y'all are on three continents. Hi. 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 <laughs> Claire makes beautiful jewelry. Adia is a wonderful mm -hmm. singer and teacher. And so is Debbie. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. <laughs> okay. So, um, and if you all are in the group and Adia or Debbie, if you happen to be in Facebook on the group, if you, if anybody comes on there, you can share the, um, you can share the, the screen. Let's see. Okay. Now what am I going to do here? I want to share my other screen. Well, let's just make sure I'm seeing that. There we go. Share that screen and get that doing what I want it to do. So here we are on day two, and day two is a really favorite day for me because it's about ease. Woo, child. I'm really trying to find some ease after going through these things just to do this. It's been a passion of mine to like really think about how do I talk to the folks I love and care about and we are all going through it. So this is our day two. Um, yes, there's a day two workbook. I have to put that link at the PDF uh, in um, the, our, our page for us and I'll make sure you get that. Uh, and it's designed so that you can either print it out as a PDF or you can um, you can go page, uh, day one is already there, but it's designed that you can go and um, also print it out, make a copy in Google Drive and the Google Sheets and be able to just type your name and type all of your stuff in there. And this is just for your own, you're not turning it into me or like anything like that, but it's really for your own uh, benefit to keep up with things as it's going along. Okay, so, and I said, this is a five day challenge. So what is our challenge? You know, I have been going through a lot of things as most of us have been, right? We are trying to figure out how to have our, get our meals. We are figure out, trying to figure out how to have um, peace of mind. We're watching people, crazy people with no mask on. I mean, I was in um, UPS trying to send out uh, CDs to some of the people in radio and some of the people who have been um, helping me with promoting, I have a new recording, a big band recording. Child, these people are in UPS touching stuff, no mask, you know, no, no mask, no gloves. I mean, it's really crazy. So yesterday we talked about WTF and Debbie, you're going to love this. You're going to know what that is because um, that has to do with my experience that I had in South Africa. Creatives by design. We're going to really talk about today, what is it as creatives that we can in this new oncoming era? Like, because after we come out of this pandemic, we are going to have to find new footing. We're going to have to find a way to be and who to be and how to do it. And so um, I think the most important thing in that regard is, is um, what do we do? How are we going to know where we should be? and um, one of the things that, one of the new skills that we need to do is think about design. We need to really think about um, why, when we are looking at things and experiencing things as a creative person, we might not even um, go to the place in our mind about, mm, that doesn't really look right. That doesn't uh, even serve the purpose that we need. So, um, we're going to talk about designers at, in regard to a skill that we can start to build a muscle around. And how do we serve as creatives during this time? And then after, because all of the new ways that we have of coping and of figuring things out are going to be um, a platform from which we can move forward to uh, a new money-making opportunity, how to reach out to folks um, how to do it easily with like not a lot of tech and a lot of issues. Um, I hopped on here just after like saying for 48 hours uh, on my Facebook page, hey, come and join me. So you don't need to do this big production. And I'm really hoping to 
share with you kind of that whole model of how to do that. And then flow. We really want to know what flow looks like and feels like. And to have ease, you have to think about flow. So how to avoid the WTF. So yesterday I invited people to think about um, ways to say stuff that if you are a mixed company or you don't really wanna like say exactly what is on your mind because I am wanting to cuss sometimes. Um, I was in South Africa, I was sharing with, with folks yesterday, I was in South Africa several years ago and I saw this big billboard that said WTF and it was for a bank. And I thought, how can they cuss like that in a public like commercial? And they were saying, no, we use, you, we use comedy for everything here. We, we always often use humor. So um, WTF is for why the fees <laughs> for this bank. And it was so funny. But, you know, I just use that. And I say, like, when I'm frustrated, instead of saying, you know, WTF, what we know is what the <laughs> we say, we say, why the fee? Why the fees, right? And so it's really important to, uh, you know, uh, find a place, find that kind of language that you can use. I'm using WTF. But at the, after, you know, we think about the way to say something, we will also want to think about what is it we're settling for and deciding to have in our life? What is it that you have to have to have? Right. If you held your breath for like, you know, 30 seconds, at some point you're going to have to gasp for air because you're going to need that air. But what a what a what in your life is it that you are sell, settling for, settling with that you can do something about or you can point your attention to to change? We only are going to have what we decide. You know, I have to have that. Like doing this right now with you, I was like, I got to talk to folks because there are things going on and we are creatives are at the forefront to be able to do something about it, to change it. So I don't want to have to say another time looking at another stupid person with no mask and no gloves and say, why the fees? Just why the fees? What is it that I have to have to have? I have to have my tribe, my, my creatives focusing on how we're going to help our communities get out of this mess. Okay, so butterfly wisdom. If you know me, you know I love butterflies. You know there are butterflies all over my house. You know that uh, the perfect gift for me is anything butterflies because butterflies are the symbol of transformation. Now, I found this, this butterfly ballad in this book I was reading. I'll tell you about it in a, little, in a few minutes called um, About Right Brain Thinkers by Daniel Pink. And this ballad right here is changed history. It was the presidential election here in the United States, and George Bush was on the Republican ticket. Um, Al Gore and Joe Lieberman were on the Democratic ticket, but on the so there were other people on the reform ticket, the socialist ticket. But this ballot, I mean, right here, if you see this picture, it's, it's really not easy to tell how to vote for the right person. So in, the Palm, in, in Palm Beach City, Florida, this was the ballot that was created to, for uh, voters to use. Now, if they had had a creative, a design person in the room when they decided on choosing this ballot, they would have been told, no, this doesn't make sense. Can you see where number five is supposed to be ticked or where number four is supposed to be ticked, it's kind of confusing. And so what ended up happening is that most of the people voted for both Al Gore and Pat Buchanan. And so those votes were eliminated. They had to be eliminated. And by default, 537 votes went, to, um, went in the trash. George Bush won that area that florida for those 537 votes and so bad design the way something is created or not created can change world history the leader of the free world was chosen because of this stupid ballot so there wasn't much butterfly wisdom there right okay another funny story about 
choosing and choices. We talked about yesterday the choice muscle. One of the things <clears throat> that we are going to have to do, ooh, my water, I need water. Hold on a second. One of the things that we'll have to do to find our footing, to find ease, is when to say no and what, what we're not going to allow to continue. And so this funny thing is, if you know my husband, my husband is somebody who loves to organize things and he's, he's very structured in that way, you know? And if you've ever seen us together, we're like polar opposites about many things. He loves building shelves. If there's a space in the house that he thinks he can get more organized, he's gonna build a shelf. Like he built shelves in our bathroom, like right above the toilet paper. Who needs a shelf there? So he built shelves in the garage and he put them in uh, like at bumper level to my car. Now I don't know about you, but I have a really hard time. I didn't grow up with a garage, right? The first time I encountered and dealt with a garage was when I married Fred. You know, now that, that was, you know, and I'm well into my adulthood. So like even driving into the garage and driving back out is a precarious situation. So I said, Fred, do not put shelves. Don't put shelves in the garage where I have to park. He did it anyway. So what do we have happen? What do you think happened? Look at this, this booby. I scratched my car because he wanted to have shelves. I said, I don't need shelves. I need spaces. Make me spaces like, you know, move something here or create a room there, but do not put shelves. And I scratched my car, I did it in my car and there it is, you know. But one of the things that came out of that is me learning how to say no to him. And no is one of the constructive ways we create ease. So we're talking about, you know, three important things. If you want to teach with ease online, these uh, elements that we've been taught, we'll talk about this week are the way to get to it. And I want you to keep thinking about what is it exactly that uh, each one allows us a new door and a new opening to. So code for creatives. We talked about WTF yesterday. We also talked about a couple of other words. I'll get, I'll show you what our list is now so far in the second day, but no, no is a love word. No is a complete sentence. You don't need to put anything else in that word, you know, just no. And that no is a way for you to get ease. Can you come and do this talk for me? No. Can you give me, I had someone call and ask me, um, they said, um, can you come at, can I have a lesson with you? Blah, blah, blah. And we organized a few elements of that. What time, how much? And then say, Oh, can I like borrow your microphone? What? No. And so <laughs> at another time in my life, I probably would have said, yeah, sure. But, um, one of the things that you may have to teach your learners is when they're, when to say no, when you have to like put an end to oversharing and, and over crossing that dotted line um, with people so that you can keep your level of ease. Another way I keep my ease is I design my McDonald's spot crew. All right. So have you ever been in McDonald's like in the morning and I don't care where you are in what city or country, what state you find a group of retired men sitting together having coffee at McDonald's. I don't know what that is about McDonald's. I don't know what that is about the, the, the elders in our communities who like McDonald's, but you will always find it. And it's kind of like a phenomenon to me. And I thought, you know, having your, who are you, who's on your McDonald's spot crew? Like who would you call and, and go to your favorite place with, or who do you do that? And so one of the ways I create ease and my ah ah is like having my uh, McDonald's spot crew. And so these men inspired me and I have my spot crew, right? 
we don't go to McDonald's, uh, but these are my gals and we get together and we have wine on Zoom or we take walks or we help each other through a lot of things. And being able to have those people you can go to is so crucial. As a creative person, you need um, a way to, ref to be able to reflect. You need to be able to ideate. You need to be able to do the things that you're like, oh, child, I cannot even handle it. Um, I, like just a few minutes before I got on this call, I called someone from my crew. Um, another person who was a great um, teacher of online artists for online ar uh, artists who want to be online is Kim Arrington. And she's been uh, working with me on this particular project. And I called her, I was like, I cannot get this button to work. She's like, oh, you know. So you need that group of people that you are going to use as your uh, mirror or your confidants or your buddies when you are working on uh, new ideas and, and ways to move your um, expertise and your artwork in the world. These foundational things help you. Um, and you really want to, to spend some time on the exercises for the homework for today and just write through that, write some of the notes and ideas about that. Okay, so this is a core like thing about um, wanting to teach ease online, wanting to bring, if you are an artisan and you, are, you knit and crochet sweaters, or I have a, um, a former student who does a lot of things other than uh, music. He's a pianist, he performs and tours, he's a songwriter, composer, and he knits. Uh, and he's been selling masks and all kinds of crafts uh, online. Um, and so one thing that umbrella is the umbrella for the ideas that I'm really sharing with you is mastery requires understanding. So if you want to master something, you cannot do it if you don't understand how to do it. Um, if you don't understand how to make how the spaghetti is supposed to turn out, the sauce, you can have all the ingredients and it won't really, you could end up with like a mess. Um, the thing that where people get tools from like, okay, you got this link and this, uh, you have this YouTube video about how to teach on Zoom and, and your administrator tells you, oh, let's go on Zoom. You have all you need in this manual or this set of exercises. That doesn't make you understand how to create ease. That doesn't make you understand how to have people really engage and come to you. How do you get people to um, share their email with you so you can invite them to teach them? Those are the things that, um, those are, there, there's a structured way to do it. At first, I didn't know how to do it. I can teach you how to do that. Um, but as we move past these core um, concepts, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the rest of the week on Thursday and Friday, we're going to kind of get in, into the nuts and bolts of actually how do you find um, your people who want to access what you have to share with them and do it in a way that's not, that's authentic, that's not like, um, you know, just cheesy or weird or spammy or anything like that. You have to understand how that works. If, but it's about having the ease where you can be water, right? A blade of grass is able to um, withstand heavy winds and bend with the wind and not be rigid. You have to be water. When you think about um, how water can move in the stream. If you watch water, it can move around obstacles and over time erode anything in its path. So water is a, is a state of mind that helps you gain footing when things are stressful, uh, when you don't know the outcome, but incorporating it as part of your DNA, oh man, it really, really uh, can make a lot of things easy, especially when your husband wants to put shelves everywhere. <laughs> And you have to say, calmly, no, honey, I don't want a shelf in the bathroom near the toilet paper. Okay, so, um, so for ease, you want to keep thinking about your way that you get from um, to mastery 
understanding that you need to be water. So my mastery requires understanding methodology is uh, in these four steps, okay? You have to learn how to hear. How do we know what's happening with our community if we are a teacher or if we are a dance instructor or yoga instructor during this pandemic? We have different things that are happening that haven't happened before, but your antenna needs to be really highly tuned. If you tune your antenna, everything that you hear, you can say, hmm, you know, we're used to like moving, moving, moving and going through our life like not paying attention. Uh, I can, you know how you drive home and how you got there? We can be so much on autopilot, but because we are slowed down to almost a complete halt, we can be looking at how to hear for where in my life am I adding ease or not? We can listen for the way we are talking to people and what we are saying. How is our word bringing about anxiety? Child, turn the TV off. If you watch them stupid people on the steps, we have stupid people here, for those of you who are here listening from another country. I don't know if it's the same in South Africa, uh, Debbie, where you, you're, you're uh, tuning in from, or Claire from Denmark, where you're tuning in from, but we have stupid people on the steps of government buildings or crashing into them with guns saying that wearing a mask and having to wear gloves or being inside sheltered down is tyranny, right? So when you listen to the narrative that's happening around you, you can, how do you create your calm space and how do you create calm space for the people who you're working with? How do you put that shield around you and them to create that calm. And doing that gives you a leg up on, um, so that you don't have uh, anxiety or depression, but it also helps you serve as a creative in a really good way that you can have consistently keep your peace of mind and keep moving. And then you can see, learning how to see. So these steps, hear, listen. You, I tell my singers, you have to learn how to hear what's going on in the moment so that you can respond when it's time in the performance, but you have to know what to listen for. And when you hear that, then you could respond. Then you could see where it goes, how it functions, how it works. And now you understand how to sing an improvisation in a 251, pro, uh, um, 251 set of chords. Now I know um, if I'm doing a Zumba class with my best Ilana and she's t teaching me the moves, I have to hear the rhythm and the music, I have to listen for what she's doing and I have to see how it all fits together to gain an understanding. And so I want you to think about this MRU methodology in everything that you do. And you will have a stair-step way to get right to what it is that you have to have to have. So this is Butterfly Wisdom again. On this CD that I did a couple of CDs ago, it was all about transformation and butterflies. And when I spoke to you a little bit earlier today about the butterfly ballad, it's from this book, great book. And he, Daniel Pink, and he says the right brainers are gonna rule the future. Okay, so this is another place. I know my husband's not here and I get to like, tell y'all all this stuff. <laughs> Cause he was here the other day when I was on um, Zoom with my girlfriends having wine. We like get together at five o'clock on Zoom on Fridays and we have wine, right? And I said to, to them something and he didn't like it, but he was like, here, he's not here now. So um, he's always calling me a right brain thinker. Yes, creatives, we're right brain thinkers, okay. You know, and in this book though, he's telling us that really it's not, no, anyone is not just right brain or left brain, You're, you use both. And, but the right brain thinkers are going to rule the future and nothing is more poignant about that in, in the now because how are we going to get out of this mess? How are you going to know what to do next? I know for me, and I'm in a, I've worked really hard for a couple of things that are coming up uh, on my um, purview pretty soon. I'm working toward finishing my doctoral degree, getting tenure where I teach, you know, but I'm, I'm, it makes me even more nervous for what is it that I'm going to serve with? I don't want to have a sinecure. I don't want some 
place where I just nestle down and I'm all good when I'm seeing my students who graduate are petrified about what to do next. So it's our right brain thinking that actually is going to help people move out of where we are. And the more you embrace that you are a leader in that way, you can, you can have a different outlook on what's happening and like jump out, bound out of bed with excitement on creating your way to do that. Um, I have a revenue model for artists that I'm going to share with you on our talk tomorrow because it has to deal with how I use the online space to create different revenue streams. But I couldn't have done that if I did not allow myself to be okay with being a right brain thinker. So all these ways of thinking about doing is, is to give you a blueprint for moving through and then having the, uh, your idea, feeling a kind of um, validation about your ideas. Okay, so yesterday we talked about pillar one in our blueprint of all teaching is perception. What people that you are work, your learners, what they're thinking, how you're thinking, is how you're perceiving it. But you don't get what you want, you get what you have to have. And so for ease, this is really the pillar to think about. If, you, if I didn't want shelves, I should have been able to really press in and say, I don't want shelves. And then we wouldn't have had that little thing about it. Or in the situation where I was working, I don't know if you have this, um, any of the vocal teachers who are, are listening, but I had to really focus my, um, put my feet down in my, working situation so that singers would be treated with respect and equality where they could have the access to the resources they need. It wasn't anyone was trying to prevent us from having them, but when you get, when people get used to not uh, regarding you, just like for decades, we didn't regard that space, public spaces needed a place for people in a wheelchair to be able to get in the building. And we now have rules about hand, you know, uh, different abilities and, and people who need access. You know, we have regulations about that now. And so there aren't regulations yet in universities about how to treat vocalists, but there should be. But it, I got to a point where um, I, it wasn't that I was going to get what I wanted by complaining, but I made it uh, a, a non-negotiable. We have to have rhythm section players if you want us to sing as an ensemble. Without the rhythm section, we're a choir. You know? And so you find those places as a creative that are important for you to get and have what you need. In res with respect to being able to, to teach in that way, if this is a guiding principle, then you will be less apt to say, oh, I don't want to like create problems or it's always going to be like that. You know, it's always going to be like that until someone says enough is enough. Enough is enough. So we'll get to our pillar three tomorrow about the online space, but I want you to keep that, that idea in place. Okay, so with ease, we have five, um, four pillars of um, ideas that you can use to create ease for your learners, for your clients, and for your students. You want to plan in snackable bites. One, uh, I mean, I got phone call after phone call after phone call from students, from teachers, from private students, and they were up to their eyeballs in the expectations that were being had of them about the online space. You cannot go to a room full of elementary school students and think about doing the same things, things that you were doing in the space when they were in front of you. You need small bits of information, okay? And we all love finger foods. Even like that makes me hungry looking at those snacks. So just give people a finger food little morsel. Like, you know, the person who goes to the party and at the party, they have a, you know, you have little plates at a party so people can eat a small portion. Who's that person that's parked at the, at, the, at the little food table and piling on all the snacks or digging their hands in the snacks, like double dipping? Oh my God, that, that really bugs me out. But finger food sized bites of information. That's how you want to prepare your information for your lessons. Uh, if you are a new teacher, 
if you're going out to the in the field for the first time, one of the classic ways we know that you are a newbie is that you come with like a whole bag full of stuff you want to do. Make it fun, make it easy, you know, um, figure out a way. Like if I was looking at those snacks right now and I was a teacher and I had to teach like songwriting to some fifth graders, I would be thinking about rhythms for each of the different snacks or words for each of the different snacks that would start a lyric or something like that. Okay, next you have to salt the oats. If you salt the oats, what does that mean, Lenora? Salt the oats. Well, my grandma used to say this all the time. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't. But in order to make her drink, you got to salt the oats. Right? You can tell anybody whatever you think they should know, but they have to be thirsty beyond just the knowledge of it's good for you. you know, like you ever try to make a three-year-old eat their vegetables? You got to salt the oats. You got to make people thirsty for what it is that you have. How do you do that? How do you create uh, the uh, curiosity? How do you create the need or the desire? People don't necessarily need music, right, in their life. But they come to you, if you're an artist and you're thinking about how do I expand my email list? How do I expand my reach? How do I connect with people? You don't have to try to make, put something fancy in your music to salt the oats to make people buy your music. You just have to be who you are, 100% authentic. We're heading into an identity economy. We're heading into the place where it's about who the people are, right? If you look at how we gravitate toward celebs and everything we want to know all about them why because connecting to people and their and what they are connected to and what's important to them makes us thirsty for more about them we want to connect to them look how the connection has been happening because of the pandemic and we're on our balconies playing music with each other we're having zoom meetings with wine we're thirsty for that connection uh, so these are the things as a creative, what about what I said, the antenna, use your butterfly wisdom. What are the things that you will connect to the cream master? A, a butterfly has a point on the chrysalis when they're about to go into their transformation period that binds to the, to the twig of a tree. And that, that connecting point is a way, I mean, that cream master needs that. that, that it's not a, a thirst so much as it's a need. It has to have that in order to move out into transformation. So that's a way that, the, that a, a thirst, like when you go, if you ever wondered, when you go to a bar and you're having drinks with your friends and there's cheese, like little cheese uh, appetizers or salty peanuts, why? So you can drink more, right? And so what are the ways that you, what are your little salty snacks that you would create in your information for your students products for your um for your customers for your clients what are the ways that you salt the oats okay i want you to think about that wine that's making me think about wine night on friday okay our next pillar is lead from the back you know sometimes if you think you are in a leadership position and you're just moving ahead with your ideas you ever seen um, a parent and they have kids with them and the kids, they think the kids are still walking behind them, but the kids have stopped and gone somewhere else or sat down on the ground, right? And you look back, you have to look back to see if they're still with you. Well, another strategy, if you are in a leadership position, is sometimes to lead from the back instead of from the front. And how that looks if you are teaching is, you let um, the students lead the conversation. You let your, if you're in a private lesson with a student, a private, con a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a client and the client, and you want to tell the client what they need to do. You're very clear on what the client needs because that's your expertise. But you know, if you were, not yet Ella, if you were, uh, Oh, no, not again. There we go. If you were um, a wedding planner, my sister is a catering uh, planner, and she does these fabulous parties for corporate, corporate parties. And she said they, they always come in and they're trying to tell her what to do. Now, it's her expertise. 
But what she does is she steps back and she lets them talk out everything they want to do. And she knows that when they say, oh, we want to have 200 balloons, she knows that they're not going to be able to do that. And she'll say to them, um, okay, she lets them continue to talk about what they want, but then she'll um, encourage them, no, you're going to need to do this because of that. And so leading from the back is sometimes about taking, um, putting the reins in the other person's hands. If I walk into a conversation with a presenter or a jazz club and they say, well, we want to make sure that you have 15 minute break and you want to play for uh, 90 minutes and we want a 15 minute break. And, and I let them talk because there's no way enough. I'm going to do that. Right. So I lead from the back in that way. But it's a way to have ease. Right. Sometimes um, when we have a very the seat of our strengths is also the seat of our weaknesses and one of my strengths is assertiveness but it can also be a weakness when i'm moving too fast or not listening to other people and so one of the things that i have to remember to do one of the things that i have to remember to do is say to people um i'm gonna just try to mute everybody i keep going to ella everybody ella wants to come up huh um, is not act like every issue is a hammer and my only tool, every issue is a nail and my only tool is a hammer. So leading from the back is a very strong pillar in the element of gaining ease and very, very important if you want to gain ease in, um, in, in, in your work and in the way that you move toward mastering, understanding, how to teach with ease online. Okay, um, but one of the people who I feel is a great example as an artist who leads from the, who led from the back, she's no longer with us. This is the beautiful Ella Fitzgerald. I love this picture of her. And I found out recently because um, the university where I teach, we became a, um, uh, uh, Ella Fitzgerald Memorial Scholar, Scholars Program. And two of our students, instrumentalists and the vocalists get uh, scholarships. And I looked into the Ella Fitzgerald Charitable Foundation. This foundation funds huge organizations like Jazz at Lincoln Center and um, uh, I forget the name of the, the organization on the West Coast, San Francisco, that's in San Francisco. It's kind of like the equivalent of Jazz at Lincoln Center, but on the <laughs> East Coast. Yes, thank you. Hey, Jenna. Hi. <laughs> and so it's really interesting what she did with her money. Not many people know that there's an Ella Fitzgerald Charitable Foundation with huge donations to lots of small and large organizations to promote not only music, the classical music, there are symphonies who are funded by her um, foundation. Um, she really loved children, so there are children's organizations. And so she is leading now, even years after she's no longer with us, leading from the back, right? And so there are many different ways that ends up looking as a creative, but it's a principle that you could stand on. Okay, and so our fourth pillar is finding your joy. Your ah, right? Finding your joy. I had the really wonderful privilege of sharing a space online with my friend Jenna Mamina beautiful singer and she comes online on her facebook page every morning at 11 11 and then the evening and she shares everything you know her spirit is just exudes right through the the um right through the lens you know and you could feel her um her passion and her loves her friends her tea her music her ideas i'm thinking right there and these kinds of things bind people to you. Um, some of the questions that came through on email so far since we've been gathering emails to, to reach out to people to come join us here was that people wanted to know how to connect to their audiences. And Jenna's a great example of that, just being open to being accessible and available and jumping online and saying, hey, everybody, how are you doing? How are you feeling? You know, that's really important. And so that's a way you can see that she finds her joy. 
um, and finds her ah moments, you know. I love being in my garden. And it's pretty funny because I'm a city gal, born and raised in Chicago, South Side. Yeah. So sorry. Um, I spent, you know, however many years it was in Boston. I uh, went to Berklee College of Music. And after Berkeley, I spent a few years there working in wedding bands before I got the nerve to up to move to New York. You know, so city to city to city. Lived in New York 20 years. So by the time I got to North Carolina, like, my husband asked me to come out and help him plant some trees. I looked at him like he had grown two heads. I'm like, plant trees? Are you kidding? You know, I barely knew how to use a garage. <laughs> but this past weekend, we were out there and I was planting bushes and like digging. I have a shovel in my hand. Oh my God. <laughs> I have a shovel in my hand. But this is where I sit. I sit here in front of my butterfly table and I, I have these rocks here and it makes me feel very zen. And I sit there and I breathe and listen to the waterfall and look at the different beautiful ways that um, little miniature rose bushes. You know, this is a place where I go to un unpack my feelings. This is a place where I go to think about how to serve my, my students and my clients. This is a place where I go to retool and replenish and think about things. So where's that place for you? What do you do to make sure you have your joy in your ah moment? You need that so that you can really serve with your, with your work, with your art. Okay, so to recap what we've talked about today, ooh, that's going fast. Um, your homework is to design your McDonald's spot, right? So let's go back to that place where we saw those cat, those guys sitting there eating, eating together at McDonald's. I want you to remember this picture. I want you to design and find your McDonald's spot crew. Who would you take with you? And where would you go in your space? Now we, we really are supposed to be inside. Did create a space online to just meet with two or three people. Maybe it's your, your, your kid's mom. You know, if, you, you, if you're a mom, maybe you have play dates with the other moms and y'all sit and have tea. But we need that so that we can be able to uh, really allow, um, <laughs> Claire said you need a crew first. You know, that's true, uh, Claire. But like when we get together at Zumba, on Monday and Wednesday mornings with, uh, with, with Lana and on Saturdays, that's our crew, you know? That's a way, and we can have more ways that we reach out. Claire makes beautiful jewelry. You know, find a jewelry crew, you know? Let's get together online and say, hey, I'm gonna have a jewelry party on Zoom for my friend Claire. And then I'll get my friends who love um, jewelry. Adia makes beautiful jewelry. Adia is on our Facebook page uh, on our Zoom call today beautiful jewelry and you know find out who else in the universe who knows friends or friends that can do that we need that people we need that so that remember we are trying to tool ourselves because in a few short weeks when crazy folks open up wherever they live you know we'll have to be at the forefront of telling people where where's your mask where are your gloves who is in your crew in your mcdonald's spot crew and then find that spot online. So yeah, there's my crew of gals. Um, and so let's go back, let's go back forward, move forward to the homework again. Um, so we're gonna create salted snacks. I, I'm a snacker, right? I have like the best snacks. I found snacks at Whole Foods that are uh, paleo friendly snacks that with no um, grain in them and they're like a cheddar cheese thing oh man it's like I destroy them in one sitting okay so I need those Zumba classes so but create salted snacks create things that make people thirsty you know just like think about having your wine at, at the at your favorite wine bar with your friends and you have the peanuts in front of you at the bar you have to do that with your ideas What's a small thing, like if, if your um, lessons cost uh, $45 or $75 for a full lesson, what's a snack-sized bite of a lesson, 15 minutes cost? If you have clients who 
you know, this is a time when everyone can't afford maybe your usual fee. What's a snackable salted, what's a salted snack version of that? Create salted snacks. And I want you to meditate for five or 10 minutes. Some people think meditation is weird and, and touchy feely and like a hippie, yeah. but it's really just breathing. Who said that? Jenna. Oh, I love meditation. I have to have it. If I didn't have it, meditation, I'd be on the six o'clock news. Uh, <laughs> professor uh, goes crazy in Walmart and or goes crazy on campus. You know, I need it. And I just simply um, sit still and breathe. I've been a meditator for 30 years now. But there are times when um, I thought, you know, I was sitting up. <laughs> tell you a funny story i was over i was uh staying over in my older sister's house and i was sharing uh and i was it was like early in the morning because i like to meditate before other people are awake so i'm sitting up on her couch kind of making the best of being in a strange setting and i'm i'm in meditation and it was a good you know nice you you take the time to breathe and you kind of settle down and it was just a really good place so here she comes she wakes up early. She comes walking through it's her house. I can't tell her to be quiet. And she says, girl, what you doing sitting up sleep? <laughs> I totally broke my meditation. I was like, so zest, so frustrated. And I was like, I was meditating. And she was like, girl, please. So, you know, that goes into like really sharing and, and helping people who know you, uh, what you need and what it is that you're up to but teaching your clients about meditation as a way to have ease and a way to be okay with what's happening. Um, share your favorite meditation practices or music or whatever in the group, in the Facebook group. Uh, those of you who uh, have um, uh, an artistry that you make things, share it in the Facebook group. It's not, you won't be breaking the rule of solicitation. It's all under this particular day's homework of designing your McDonald's spot because maybe your McDonald's spot is getting together with a group, a group of people who like meditation or who are new to meditation. Okay. So let's think of opening ourselves to each other. I think networking, uh, the idea about networking is not from the true place it evolved as an African principle of it's not only what you get when you're with people, but it's what you give so that that cycle keeps going. Um, it's really important to think of networking as, hey, I have this and I can help you with this. What are you up to? What are you doing? Oh, you know what? I have a friend who, you know, does this and I could introduce you and connect your, your people to each other. That's a way to make connection for, to your clients, your potential clients, and to your audiences. Offer them something. Offer to get together with them just in a Facebook Live and say, hey, you know, come hang out with me today. I have a friend, Tracy Eileen. She's been doing these beautiful meet me in the parlor kinds of sessions where she just gets like she has a beautiful home and she sits with her wine and she talks with her friends. Um, one of the things I love about the pandemic is we're learning how to do that now, connect with each other more. Oh, and what is your light switch about? Where do you have a place that you are groping around in the dark and you're looking for something? You're like, I know it's here because I put it here yesterday. I don't need to turn on the light. Your problem is that you don't have the light on, so you're groping in the dark for longer. But you can go to the solution, which is turning on the light and having access to what you need and want. And so this is the kind of mindfulness that you should be going through your day with. Journaling about what you are up to as a creative and what you'd like to be up to. Tomorrow I'll share that revenue model for artists with you when we talk about the online space. But it's a way that I found my light switch because people were often telling me, oh, you do too much. You're always doing different projects. You're so busy, whatever. Why the fees? <laughs> yeah, I'm busy because I'm, I uh, feel an obligation to follow the little whisperings that I get from the creator when I'm meditating about things to serve the people that I work with, my students, 
and to be who I really truly am in, in the world. And it used to really bother me that people would say, oh, you do too much, you're always so busy. And then I wrote down, I made this model of who and what I am and, and it, so I could connect the dots and that's my light switch. So I want you to just, I'll put that in your ear to think about as we depart right now and um, think about what's your light switch? What, what are the my, ways that you take a moment from mindfulness? When you're eating, is the music on or is the TV on? Or can you eat in pure silence and just think about each bite and each food? Doing anything where you're focused on what it is you're doing instead of doing something and your mind is somewhere else. These are the ways that you get ease in your day. Meditation, even if it's five minutes of just breathing in and breathing out. I love my meditation. I have a few meditation um, um, apps. One is called Calm. You can see my, I love Calm. I love Down Dog. And then there's this um, app called Liberate. I don't know if you can see that. Um, those are my apps that I go to. If I can't find my footing, um, I just find one of those apps and just turn it on for a few minutes. That's ways that I have my light switch. So here's my list of codes. These are the words that you, I want you to use with hashtags on our Facebook group. Why the fees, right? Or, you know, hey, FTS, that's my favorite one, like, recently. People are like, oh, yeah, you're going to come, we're going to open up and the barbershop is open and you can go back to the mall. I'm like, FTS with that one. Miss me with that one. And yeah, I go ahead and say badass all the time. Badass creatives. All of you on this line are badass creatives because you are thinking about who you're going to be and how to be as you move forward and find your footing and how you gain the courage and the confidence and connect to people. Um, and saying no. No is a love word. It's a complete sentence. It's the way you get your ease. It's the way you keep your mojo going. So today we talked about how to avoid the why the fees, how you want to think about design. I want you to watch everything that you do. I want you to look, look at your phone. Like, is this designed so that it's helpful for me or useful? Because one of the things that's going to come out of this era after the dust settles are inventions and creations that people came up with as a result of what i saw this thing on the, my news feed today where someone created a little hook that you put on your keychain that opens doors it's like made of brass and you just click it in there and it'll open the door for you so you don't have to touch it right. there can be so many new ways that people come up with money making ideas just so to get through and cope, keep your antenna up, keep your antenna up. Mastery comes from understanding. If you want to master who you are as a creative, you have to listen, you have to see, listen and hear and be looking for the things that you are uniquely purposed to be able to help with. How do we serve as creatives during the global pandemic? The way you serve is pay attention because this is our time. This is our time. People are hurting and people, out of jobs there you know you have you might have an organizational mind or creative idea at how to pull together your friends to go bring food to a food bank you may have an idea to how to get all of your church members or all of your friends together to deliver a medications that are needed by elderly people in the city so um your ways to serve don't necessarily just have to be in the immediate work you do um, as an artisan or as a, as, a, as a performer, it could be that your creative thinking helps to solve some of the problems and flow with it all. So that's it for today. I am gonna stop sharing my screen so I can get back to you. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna unmute you if I did that. Did I, uh, how can I, did I mute you? Can you all? Unmute all. All participants are unmuted. Am I still on my Facebook Live page? Let's see if I'm still there. Looks like I am. So, the uh, are all the people there. Hi. I am. I'm involved in a webinar tomorrow. Unfortunately, 
at the same time as yours. Okay. Um, but I uh, really want, tomorrow is really important for me. And this, this whole, uh, I, I'm so glad for this challenge. I think that um, I don't do a lot of online teaching myself just yet, but um, it's really been very useful for me, the stuff you've talked about today. I have not done yesterday's homework either, but never mind. Um, <laughs> uh, it's fantastic and uh, very, very, very useful for me. Um, but I think tomorrow will also be as just as, and I'm hoping that uh, since I will miss it, I, I can it on Facebook after the fact, right? Or what? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to put the video together with the, the video that I have live on Facebook that's ha happening right now and the slides that I showed you in Zoom. Right. I'm supposed to know how to get them together at the same time. I haven't had success in that yet. I'll figure it out. But uh, I'm going to make sure everybody can get to those uh, to be able to look at it at your own time and pace. Maybe I'll have a watch party when I put them together. Um, figure that out because this is what we need. We all need the same kind of um, connection, information. It's stuff that you know. It's, it's not anything new. There's nothing new under the sun, but it's just like having, you know, so I just tried to curate things together that we could kind of have a common thread through. Yeah, and if y'all, you, can y'all see Claire's beautiful glasses? No. <laughs> I love her glasses. She has the best glasses. Did you make them clear? No, 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 not at all. Um, you know that I'm a, I'm a quirky person. So when I go into these little, uh, you know, three cro three dollar cups, looking for these are just ordinary. Um, uh, what do you call it? Reading plus two or plus two. Whatever they are. Um, and that you know, I look at all the ones I've got and the different shapes and the colors and you know, I've got you know thousands of pairs all around the world. So, but these are the ones I use mostly for computer, computer um, activity. So, uh, so they had these really funky red glasses and I thought that's kind of nice. So, I yeah. love it. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Cool. Does so, anyone, oh, so Claire, we will make, I'll make sure that you have the resources from tomorrow. Have a good meeting tomorrow. Maybe I'll see you on our Zumba class. Yes, I, I won't be at the class tonight, clearly. But uh, yes, 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 Zumba tomorrow. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Have a good time. Thank you so much for today. It was really, really very useful. Thank, Thank you. you. That, that makes me feel great. Like all the struggle was worth it. Oh, it. oh, yes, it was, yes, wonderful, wonderful. Very inspiring too. And I'm, I'm, I'm already ticking over about some watch parties, as you say. So, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anyone else have anything to add or share before we sign off and go to the rest of our day? Um, Hi, look at with that beautiful picture. Thank you. Good morning. I really, I, I overslept, but I jumped in and I got in here and I heard the part where you were talking about the McDonald's and that really struck to me because even all the way down to St. Thomas and U.S. Virgin Islands, there are a group of older men that sit down in McDonald's and have breakfast every day. Isn't it funny? It's like, how did it's, they find McDonald's of all the places where they could go? And they have a, yeah. a secret organization. <laughs> but one of the, my, uh, my grandparents, we would go every Sunday and one of the people I always would see there I just, you know, must up the crush to talk to him. And he turned out to um, be one of, like, the local musicians. Uh-huh. And I was able to kind of, like, foster, before he passed away, foster, you know, just a relationship with him. But every time I came to the McDonald's, he was there going over to make sure and speak to him. Wow. Yeah. So just being able to be someplace where people can find you, you never know whose Bible you are that day, right? You never know who is going to make a connection and you're there for them. Like when Jenna gets online every morning and every evening for her people, she is a, a safe space for some place to be connected to. And you can do the same thing. This is one of the ways as a creative that you can connect people. Even if you feel like you're isolated and you don't have a crew, there's a, there's seven and a half billion people on the planet. Not anymore because of coronavirus, not to make light of that. No, that's really a, a depressing thought, right? Yeah. That's a depressing thought. 
But this is even more urgent that we come out of our comfort zone and connect with other people and offer up ourselves to other people. I have two, uh, well, this question, I'm not, I, I'm proud of you for having the technology that you, that you're getting. Like, I have no idea how to do Zoom and Facebook at the same time, let alone, how do I get my face active instead of a photo? Does anybody know this? Yeah, you go to the bottom of your screen and you should see a little video picture and click on it and say, let's see if I can start, open start video. Start video. Mm. Yay, there you are. Hello. Hi. Hi. I love Hi. those earrings. Hey, oh. lovely. Cinco de Mayo. That's right. It's oh Cinco my gosh, de Mayo. yes, that's right. Wow. That's one of the things I miss so much about living in Los Angeles that uh, every right. year I was on it. Well, oh my where God. are you now? Uh, Copenhagen. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. This Claire is made a beautiful jewelry. Great. Oh, wow. I would love to see. I love where you're sitting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I, ha it's, I, I have a space here and the sound is perfect because it's so chock -a full of things you can't even begin to understand. <laughs> so the voice, well, uh, you know, the sound is great in here. But so Frank can come and make shelves. <laughs> it, right? It's such a mess that um, my very first, um, my very first online class, I didn't kind of, not that I didn't know it was a mess, but I didn't think about it. I had the camera thing and I, and I suddenly looked at myself and saw all this crap behind me and I thought, oh, heck no. <laughs> so I found me a piece of fabric and kind of stuck it up some kind of way behind here because I just, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> I do know Sarah, you, you have an Etsy page, right? Yes. Yeah, I, so share I, your Etsy page in the Facebook group. Yes, I will do that. On on the um on this one, on this um forgot it, forgot the page page already. Teach Not your that. Yes. Yeah, teach with ease online. You could Okay, I will put it there. Yes, yes. And Jenna could find your beautiful jewelry. Yes, yes, thank you. So this is, so yeah, so, um, but uh, yeah, but I know, I know Zoom has this um, virtual, what you call it, virtual background thing that where it hides your mess and just sort of, you know, cuts your face out. But um, yeah. They I'm do? Weird. <laughs> yeah, they do. I, they do. I, 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 um, I thought that this background in this, for this seminar I'm doing tomorrow, it's for some very conservative people. And I thought that maybe this might be too distracting. So on Sunday, I went on Google to see what does what do they recommend for the best backgrounds for a professional, you know, meeting, blah, blah, blah. And the first thing I came up was, um, yes, you can get virtual Zoom background. And I was like, no, okay. So uh, I spent, you know, the most part of Sunday looking at that. Um, and when I finally found them, I, I'm a little embarrassed to say, but the one that appealed to me the most was uh, was the um simpsons living room <laughs> <laughs> i thought i don't i don't think that you know any indian businessmen are going to find that so funny so i decided no i will not use that one but um so i just found a blanket of you know just a one color um blanket which works fine so i'll use that for that thing but i love this print and um yeah yeah so, so that's that's not real or that is real that is your back this is a print it's a piece of it's a bit of fabric oh, it's a beautiful piece of, yeah beautiful. so i thought i stick this up behind me so nobody can see my stuff and uh yeah yeah awesome so, yeah thank you so, so let me I'm so happy that we had a moment together. Thank you, Debbie, all the way from South Africa. You're in Durban? I am, yes, in Durban. Thank you, Lenora. This has been fantastic. Also, just want to echo what Claire said. At least, you know, you've given us so much now to think about. I didn't yes. attend yesterday, as you know. 
but just from what we've done today, I have, I'm so looking forward to tomorrow <laughs> yeah. because there's so much to think about now and this whole new yes. online learning yes. is very new, you know, to, to me and yeah. also to us in South Africa, you know, there's big challenges here with, you know, network and data issues and no, oh, yes, us, like have um, really been challenged by this situation here. So this really does uh, create a wonderful opportunity to not be bogged down by, oh, you know, we don't have, our students don't have data or we're not going to be able to do this, but rather to start thinking about what's the light switch, what, what can we do? What are these small things that we can do to just start moving forward without feeling overwhelmed? And yep. so I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to oh, start the process in thinking in this way. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. I really, it, I mean, I really literally couldn't sleep at night. You should, I'll show tomorrow, I'll show you on my, my wall where I had all these sticky colored stickies of trying to like just pull out my thoughts about what, do pe what are people struggling with? What are the people saying to me when they call me to, to walk them through how to manage it's insane to think that you can all of a sudden gain a modality. Teaching online is a whole new way of thinking about expressing, articulating ideas. And then you have, so you have your anxiety as a creative person. Um, right. The compassion you have for the people who are learning with you. It's really, really like almost, in, I mean, the, that pressure is a lot. And it doesn't have real. to be when you, when you put, it's real. When you put anxiety with your music or with your art, it's the worst combination of all. And so it doesn't have, it can have ease. It's about how you think about what you, what your role is as it, your role changes. But also we have a, there's, there are two things going on. There's us trying to, as, as a, as humanity, as a society, we're trying to manage how to keep going. We're also called, whenever there's crises, there is something that comes out of the crises, betters humanity. And w what we're seeing is that the creative people are the people who are, we're the people helping people live and breathe. People are using music and the arts so they can function. I'm gonna cry. So they can function. And we have to have the obligation and the responsibility to use what we know is right and good and what we are called by the creator to do, manage our lives, but then keep that antenna up. How else, when this, when this changes, I'm going to go join the school board and I'm going to change some of the stupid education, law, the laws in our education system that don't make any sense. I'm going to make sure that I help that next person who knocks on my door for you know, voter registration, I'm gonna listen next time. I'm gonna help the people help each other, you know, help the, our society. So I love, I love there's, that's what I love about where we are, the positive side. The negative side is just devastating. I mean, I can't watch the news sometimes. And my husband, he likes to analyze and think through things. And I have to I say, I, ha I can't talk about this right now. And I have to move toward my creative friends or what can I do to lift people's vibration and energy so that we can think of um, the solutions or put our antennas up and put our hearts together. So thank you for, for sharing your sentiment. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll see you all tomorrow if you can join us. If not, you yeah. can come back to this page and get what you need. Um, stay healthy and stay well. And you. Thank you. Keep your hearts wide open. <laughs>